She's not very loud for me. No, me neither. Maybe it's, she's not doing it right. Not bad. With popsicle, so good. It's <laughs> a delicious popsicle. Mm. Oh, God. It does sound good. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Done I'm a with professional. Your yeah. <laughs> that look, you just sucked on the stick, stick again. You weren't done. It's so like I can't stop being a little gay with it. It has a nice little woody flavor to it. It does. I normally chew on these popsicle sticks until they splinter afterwards. Oh, wow. I do that too. I chew them. I have a a habit of doing that too. That looks like piss, doesn't it? Like, does it look yellow when y'all screen? The drink Uh, you're holding. Yeah. The drink you're holding here in the audio podcast. Yes, yes, it does. It looks exactly like pee. It's frothy and and steaming. Weird. It's got egg yolk in it or egg white. No, this is, um, I mean, it's like a really vibrant green on my screen. I'm just wondering why my color is so weird. No, it looks green here. <laughs> Welcome to episode 26, where we talk about piss oh. and listen to Toker eat a popsicle stick that was dipped mm. in I'm sugar. Not, I'm mm. not ready yet. You're not? I'm You're not, not doing the, the Odyssey yet. What do, what you don't need audacity. to do Audacity. Uh, we don't do it anymore. Audacity. It's fine. Wait, wait. We don't do what are you saying? Odyssey? I, was, it, I mean, if you, you can pronounce it that way if you enunciate the A. <laughs> what? More? Odyssey. Ambiance is nice. Odyssey. Hey, you said it right. Ambience. Ambience. I used to take those, and they're fun to drive on. They're a really great medication. Something else. (laughs) Is that the one when you do like the race where you take it and then chug a beer and then you try to get home before you pass out? Oh, no, but I'm pretty sure I talked about, uh, what was it? Ambience. The Line Cook Olympics. What? Line Cook Olympics? It's where you get two. It's like a cooking show. It's like two groups of line cooks, and they have to go through a whole service. But each before before they start, they each eat a brownie with different levels of marijuana in it. Mm-hmm. And it's just who has the better service. <laughs> the I'm final a seasoned round is, professional. The final round is just two line cooks. They both do just you know just a syringe full of heroin, and the first one to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich wins. That's it. <laughs> I could win that. I've, <laughs> I've made a crap ton of peanut butter jelly sandwiches. And he's done day. a lot of heroin. A lot of heroin. <clears throat> I don't I'll smoke weed be. anymore, but I used to. I used to smoke a lot of weed where I work now, at work. And <laughs> the walk-in cooler there is basically in the bar. <laughs> so I thought, you know, I'd be clever when I hit my bowl in that walk-in cooler. Uh, I would open a tub of garlic and shake it like I was using sage to get spirits <laughs> out of a haunted house. And I'm like, they'll never know. Yeah, they, knew. They, they knew. They knew. They knew. They're just yeah. summoning the garlic demon. No. <laughs> Blowing my smoke in the exhaust, the little fans in the cooler, being like, yeah. Well, now they have devices <laughs> you can blow into, and then no smoke comes out the other side. It's like filters. Really my cousin uses one because she's like in the city. So that reminds me of the story. I was um, in my teens, I guess. I used to, I had some friends that were college age, and we would, go over to their house and I, I would hang out with them and smoke weed and um you know Matt. yeah a little bit a little bit uh, but your, but one of the things is, is going to drop you so you know the uh mm-hmm. no they can't now it's all it's all locked in it's all locked in don't all forget new show in. we're all playing characters now this is real uh fuck you uncle sam not no yeah none of this is real the um anyway but anyway in the story i read about the um so we're in this basement and, and his parents are home, gone for the weekend or whatever. And so we're all just smoking pot in there all weekend. But so his, his idea was he had a bunch of these, um, you, you know, like a paper towel, the cardboard core of a paper towel mm-hmm. roll. So we had that. And then we had a bunch of uh, like downy dryer sheets. Mm-hmm. So we take the downy dryer sheets and rubber band them to the end of the paper towel tube. Ooh. And then, and then you pass that as you pass the bong or the joint around. And so every time you, you know, you would, you would, you would, you know, take a toke on the joint and then you would blow Excel or blow it out into the paper towel thing, which would filter through the fabric softener. And then the house wouldn't smell like pot. 
Um, and we totally all thought it was works. a great idea. Mm-hmm. Um, never mind the fact that we're passing the joint around. You know, it's just <laughs> completely. <laughs> There's only smoke when after you pull on it, man. That's the only time that the joint smokes. Only time it smells like that. And so everything. Everything smelled like that little fucking bear, and it yeah. was fantastic. <laughs> like and lavender and got weed. Mm. Oh. Lavender and weed, yeah. So, yeah, we all got in. I didn't get in trouble, but, I mean, he, he got in a lot of trouble. I didn't see him for a couple months. But, <laughs> That's um, the skit right there, know. but instead of instead of passing around the tube, it's a bunch of teens passing around the bear and blowing into it and getting it stoned. Uh, it has also to get, covering well, up the scale time. or the smell. <sighs> yeah. It sounds like something would be on Robot Chicken. Seth Green, hire me. <laughs> that's definitely a robot chicken skit for sure i had tried something similar to that years before uh when my parents the one and only time my parents ever left me home alone because i had you, three siblings so that was a rare thing you blew weed smoke into a teddy bear's ass uh <laughs> no but we i, I thought oh. you know i had a, the first opportunity i had that everyone was gone i had like a uh, you know, a party at my house, right? I invite a bunch of people over, and uh, they invite people over, and, and look everything. at you with and, all the friends. Yeah, what happened? Um, no, I mean they were even weren't my friends, which was part of the problem. They just completely destroyed my house. But they, um, <laughs> so I, um, and they were like, we were like, there was like a thing like people were smoking nutmeg. Does anybody remember that? I remember no. that. Why did you do that? Was like Why a, did you do that? They it thought was like they would a, get you I, it was like a supposed to be like a hallucinogen or something. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was like, I don't know, 13 or something. So who knows? So, so there were like disposed of nutmeg joints all over my house and um, nutmeg joints. <laughs> yeah. And so, and I, my parents didn't smoke. Nobody in my house smoked. I didn't smoke. And the, um, uh, the people at home didn't see your quotation marks there. Your quotes. Oh yeah. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't smoke quote unquote smoke. Smoke, yeah. right. So, um, <laughs> but um, everybody that came over there seemed like they did, but I just I opened all the windows in the house, right? So everybody was smoking in the house. It was like, I don't know, 20 something people smoking in a house with the windows open, though. So it didn't, was not going to smell like smoke. My parents got home the next day and uh, they used up all my dishes. And so I put all the dishes into the dishwasher. They didn't and uh, well, no, well, I didn't know. My mom always did that, right? So I, I just put the dish detergent into the dishwasher, like that was on the sink. And mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever done that, but it's a bad I idea have. because you turn you turn it on, and then you, it's it's almost like in a movie where there's like two feet of suds in your kitchen, mm-hmm. correct? And water. <laughs> and so uh, I woke up about I don't know three or four o'clock in the morning to a weird sound, and that was everywhere. Mm-hmm. I cleaned it all that like up. Sounds like a mid nineties like. Teen home comedy. alone movie yeah, yeah teen home alone comedy yeah it was it was bad but um i thought all the suds were out by that point so i did the smart thing and shut the, the dishwasher door and turned it back on and went back <laughs> to bed so i did it again so i had to, so about eight o'clock that morning i most of you know getting everybody up and out and i just left the house and went to another friend's house and stayed there until my parents got home and called me and wanted me to come home for something but that was it was uh, a spanking, wasn't it? That was awful. Anyway, I don't know where I was going <laughs> with that story, but uh, yeah, you went somewhere that. with it. I, I don't know if we were supposed to go along with you or not, but you I'm went just wondering what that was parents... my one that was my one party party uh ever house party I ever had. But after that, was I, your was, punishment? I was watched very I was probably ground. I mean, I stayed grounded a lot, so I was probably grounded and everything. I, I don't <laughs> remember a lot of it, but it was um I mean I was smoking a lot so it was were you spanked really as a hazy. child yes a lot mm. yeah i mean that's why oh, you yeah, brought plenty. a child up that was um it was uh that that was the era i mean for me anyway that was like i mean you were doing god's work if, if you weren't then you were doing the devil's work so. <laughs> i was spanked a lot until i got into my teens and i started moaning and then my parents just didn't do it anymore <laughs> which was upsetting <laughs> oh but- about your nutmeg story, did your parents think you had burned a thing of Swedish meatballs or something when they? <laughs> no, no, because I mean, honestly, the I mean, the the two or three cartons of cigarettes that got smoked with oh. that many people in the house yeah. smoking the whole house. You know, I set up box fans in the windows, but I mean, that's I mean, now as an adult, I know that cigarette smoke, you know, permeates like curtains, ceilings, mm-hmm. carpet, everything. It's if if you have that's... people that don't smoke at all, that yeah, unless you. You know, oh, you yeah, know, we, we know always gonna smell that. We so. notice, 
Right. Yeah. That um, ruined a date for me once. So I was staying with this girl and I was staying with my parents at the time because I just kind of lost my roommate because uh, he was doing a lot of drugs at the time. And I was like, I need to leave here. <laughs> so I did. And I was staying with this girl in Colombia, and I brought a blanket and my parents smoke in the house, which is, you know, <laughs> awesome. And then uh, yeah. when I when I roll over and she smells the blanket, she goes, uh, your blanket smells like cigarettes. And then within the next two days, she's like, I don't think I want to see you anymore. So it was the blanket all along. Why do you yeah, wash the fucking blanket? I do. Yeah. I did. Yeah. That's just kind of how it is. Also, why is it okay to smoke weed in your house, but not cigarettes? I don't think either one should be smoked in the house. Both are bad. Well, one makes the place smell like um, a sort of a dank swamp, and the other one makes it smell like an ashtray, and both well, are pretty bad. <laughs> I mean, I don't with, know. With, I mean, with weed is that, that you normally you're smoking maybe a bowl, you know, if it's right. just you. Uh, if you smoke cigarettes in the house, like I used to, uh, you'd smoke like 10 cigarettes in an afternoon, maybe. And so it's the the weight difference of the smoke permutation is is way different. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I I remember smoking. I, I was pack pack and a half a day when I really heavily smoked, mm-hmm. and it was. Um, it, I mean, that's that's a lot. I let Mahogany b- borrow one of my Pathfinder books when she was first learning how to play, and um, she was like, "You smoke in your house, huh?" Like it, had, the book smelled like cigarette smokes. <laughs> Everything. Everything, sticks. everything just absorbs it. Like sometimes, so, like yeah. I'd, I'd help out at the Green Dragon, and people would sell magic card collections, and you can tell, like mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. would just you just open up like a shoebox full of magic cards, and it would just boom, hit you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you black box of these magic cards. Yeah, like you can tell they they had cigarettes and dogs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you don't stink, Luke. No, no, it's just that hair gets everywhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It does. Don't smoke really in your does. house, people. Just don't do it. Or smoke don't, in your car. Better. Don't do that either. And don't have no, dogs. They're off. No, I smoke in my car. I don't dogs give a fuck. I love a cigarette while I'm driving. You can just yeah. ride with somebody else. I don't care. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll sit in the car, but no one's smoking in my car because it fucks up the value and I like to resell my shit. Yeah. I'm driving I mean, an 03 Lincoln Town car. There's, I'm not getting much of a resale value out of that. I'm going to enjoy. Fuck, fuck. There's an ashtray in every door and one in the center console. That car was made to be smoked in. That's so luxury I do right it. there. I want to come smoke in your car now. Yeah. Do it, man. Um, Put the ashtrays. Bring in a cigar. <laughs> bring in a cigar. <laughs> We'll bring a microphone, do a podcast while we're driving, smoking yeah, in your car. Idiots, idiots, well, smoking I'll sell in like the car. <laughs> Dude, some good tunes, fucking couple smokes, back road, nighttime. I'm in heaven. Or just, or not, I don't know about back road and nighttime. That can get creepy. But you know, going to the beach, that's nice. Just driving along there. Yeah. Drive on the beach. Who's gonna <laughs> stop you? Uh, you can do that in Daytona, but I don't think you can do it anywhere else. Yeah, Can't do it in a Lincoln. <laughs> have you, you tried yeah. I was fucked up on the value. beach once and lost my Lincoln that's, uh, that's a different story <laughs> I don't hear that story you, you just lost your car just did, yeah. Yeah, no like, it was um, mm-hmm. it was when the map room was closed and I wasn't driving a Lincoln actually it was a Buick I like big cars mm-hmm. and um, the map room was a place that we all we were at we drank we worked at like we basically lived at that bar and when it was closing it just, it was wild. There was porn on the big screen for some reason. Uh, we were smoking weed, drinking all the liquor. And um, there was a girl that had been coming in there a bunch and I convinced her to go to the beach with me. So we went to the beach and I found out fooling around the beach at night seems fun until you realize that it's cold and wet and sandy. <laughs> um, and then I tried to, <laughs> was like trying to leave and I couldn't find my car. I don't know how far we rolled around on that beach, but where we came in and where we came out were two totally different places, apparently. So it took about an hour and a half to find the car. You fucked oh my God. across that beach. That's a- Yeah. <laughs> then I drove into a dumpster. You shouldn't drink and drive is what I'm really getting at. And I did. Just, that. Yeah. <laughs> really shouldn't do that. Mm. Is that That's the same um, car that had the chalkboard paint? Uh, Yeah. Yes, it was. That was uh, it was 
It was a 1994 Buick LeSabre that I got for like $500 and put 340,000 miles on, I think. Um, Good car. Yeah, it was a great car. When it, when it stopped running, uh, I had to crank it with a socket wrench. Uh, there was no vent. You know, a lot of people don't have AC. I didn't have vent. Like no air. There was no blower motor for, for anything. Um, nothing in it worked, but the engine barely worked. But me and a buddy took, uh, it wasn't even chalkboard paint. It was just flat black Rust-Oleum. And we rolled it on the car with rollers. And you could draw it with chalk and I could spray it off the next day. And I took it to the green dragon and like uh, the woman who was like, what was that? Scott's wife had Adriana. like kids out there. Yeah. Adriana, and she brought kids out there and they drew like dragons on it. And, and I took it to, uh, when I took it to work and we had lunacy parties, people would go out there and draw like cool, like artwork pieces on it and shit. And then I thought, well, I'm just going to leave chalk on it all the time. And people, could, anybody could draw on it. And I found out that that's a terrible idea. Because people love to draw dicks, boy, do I! <laughs> and I lived, <laughs> I lived, I lived in a uh, right down the street from an elementary school, and uh, I knew it was one night. We closed the bar. It's three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning. I walk outside, and somebody had spent. It had to be hours. The whole <laughs> driver's side was one big, super detailed, veiny dick and balls just <laughs> it's a six foot long girthy dick on the side of my car and i'm like there's no hose here to wash it off with i have to drive it at least to home and i'm like what would have happened if if i hadn't taken my car home tonight now i have to take my car home tonight and wash it or what if i hadn't noticed it's impossible to notice it was a six foot long girthy dick the point was is that there was a chance that the next morning as children walked to school, they would walk past this car that had a six foot long veiny dick on it. And that's when I was like, no, I'm not leaving chalk on the car anymore. It's just not fun. <laughs> it can be fun. Big veiny dick ruined it. Like a lot of relationships. I mean, it seems like, any, I mean, it just, it always devolves into that. Uh, Every time. <laughs> Big really dicks everywhere. Well, people have been drawing dicks since the yes. beginning of time. They're found in cave mm. paintings. Yeah, yeah. There's people love something dicks. About it. Yeah, it's just something about a dick. <laughs> One of my favorite drawings on there, besides the, the 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 cool artistic stuff, is somebody took um, or when you're sitting in the car and somebody's looking at you. There's the window, right? And yeah, in the window you see me driving. A dude in his at, at that point in time mid twenties, but what was drawn on the driver's seat was like an X ray vision of what's underneath that, and it was just a naked girl. So it looks like the the bottom half of me was was a petite big titted woman. Oh oh oh! I got you. Like on the door. Yeah, on the, the door. door. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought that was creative. Oh. Again, elementary school children do not need to right, see that. I was the just going day. back to the children and the. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, so, kids ruin um, everything. Let's just be honest. That's true. Yeah, kids I mean, just stop having I mean, them. the moral of that story is don't live near schools. I mean, yeah. just be like yeah. now, I legally can't. can't. No, oh, right. you took my check, you bastard. This comic aside said. was brought to you by Megan's Law. Yeah. There, there used to Thank be, you, Megan. probably still is, but there was the uh, the the Predator app, the um. Oh God! You could pull up this app, and it would show you where everybody who was um, um, charged as a sex offender or whatever. Which, granted, some of those people get that charge because they were peeing in public and which they were like, drunk or something. It's pretty broad. Which is, kind of, which is it, it's, it's kind really, of broad. Certainly broad. <laughs> but I, I pulled I it really up. do think there needs to be a. I've touched kids list. I've raped someone list, and I pissed in public list. I just think there needs to be three yeah. separate lists. Yeah. It's so like you go door to door. Heroin. Weed and heroin are on the same narcotics level as far as the, the federal level is concerned. Being drunk and peeing at, outside at a concert is on the same level as far as stuff goes as, as way worse things to do. But that app was fun. Because <laughs> you could pull oh, it up God. and it would show you all the registered sex offenders in your neighborhood, oh. right? The GPS. And I pulled it up at work, and it was like, oh, there's, you know, it's, there's a sprinkling of red dots. Those are those are sex offenders. Weird that your work is right by several churches. 
Yeah, well, I mean, in South Carolina, everything's <laughs> right by several churches. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, That's why there's so many red dots. Everything's near a church, a, a liquor store, and a gas station. Mm-hmm. Or a the check cash city. place. Dollar, Dollar General. The Holy um, Trinity, the Holy City. <laughs> but when I pulled it up, when I lived in Cross, there was nothing in Cross. I mean, but nobody there was, got caught. But no, no, there was loads of red dots, way more red dots than anywhere else. Oh, God. There was nothing as far as, like, businesses in there and i realized oh where i live at and cross is far enough away from school zones Mm -hmm. and where people don't have to go to their neighbors when they move in to say that they're sex offenders because the houses are spaced so far apart i was like this is where all the the sex predators live oh you're living in the fucking exile zone yeah which is why i tried to to not live there for as long (laughs) as i did (laughs) No, there was somebody in Alaska who had an app like that, and he would search up pedophiles. But what he would do is go to their house and then beat them to an inch of their life with a hammer. For peeing oh. in public. I mean, everybody needs a hobby. Well, not peeing in public. I think he looked up the ones that specifically touched kids. He oh, was called he was the Alaska Avenger. About his murder. No, no, never the murder. Alaska Avenger. That's what they called him. He did some light hmm. avenging, no murder. Yeah. It's like the Punisher light. <laughs> yeah, it's punishment still if you're beating someone with a hammer. Trust me. Uh, I think of the trust character, me. the Punisher. Yeah. 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 He he murdered people. Yeah, he did. Mm. Who's your favorite Punisher? Uh, Dolph Lundgren. Dick Wilson. Don't at me. Did you say Dick Wilson? Yeah. <laughs> Is that a Punisher? Yeah. No, you're just making <laughs> names up. We're talking movie yeah. Punishers. There's there's four Punisher. There's four people that I know of that have played the Punisher. There's Dolph Lundgren who was the first. Then there was that dude who was in the the the, sh- the shitty movie John Travolta was also in. Oh yeah, it was bad. There was that Punisher, which the fight scenes were really good, but the the rest of the movies kind of garbage. Uh, the Highlander guy, right? Yeah. Sean yeah. Connery. No, no it's uh, <laughs> shit. What's his name, Terrence? You know these sh- things. The guy that you know, he's the, the the star the guy that starred along with Sean Connery in the Highlander. Uh, no, I think that's just the guy that looks kind of like him. It, it wasn't uh, Christopher no, yeah, Lam- no. Lambert. It's, not Christopher it, it's Lambert. just a, it's a Christopher Lambert alike. Mm-hmm. I forget his name. Is but, it really? I always yeah. thought it was the same guy. No, they just look real similar. There was the guy I like who played that Punisher um, movie though. He played Titus Pullo in Rome. He was a Punisher. I like that movie a lot. War Zone. Oh yeah, that was that one was okay. Sure was on. It's real that, cheesy that, at the end though. That one felt more like the comic book that from the nineties yeah. that I was familiar with because I haven't read much modern Punisher. But the Netflix Punisher's dope. He's so short. He's very short. He could have been I a like Wolverine. Him. I mean, I like him, but I, I I don't know. I didn't like him in Walking Dead, and so I it almost turned me off on him as the Punisher. I don't. You're not supposed to like him in Walking Dead though. He's a I dick hole. Yeah, I didn't like, like him as the Punisher. He's a dick hole. <laughs> You can make a likable yeah. dick hole. <laughs> yeah, but not a murderer. Well, explain. Explain. Dexter. People love him. Ooh, yeah, but he wasn't a dick. Dexter about wasn't it. a dick. He was very charming. That was kind of part of his. Fine. Uh, was it a clockwork orange? Uh, well, Alex. Alex was Anybody charming. I liked him. What? Yeah, but he was also kind of a dickhead. Oh, yeah. No, he was definitely a dickhead. He was a charming no, dickhead. Well, then, there's your likable dickhead then. I don't know if I, I didn't find him charming. That was his but, whole character. That's because you're not down with the youth <laughs> of the 1960s. Yeah, Mr. Grandpa over there smoking the nutmeg. <laughs> yeah. Back in my day, back uh, in my day, some old geezer smoke, asked me if, spices. <laughs> some old geezer asked me if I can get him if you get me if I get him a bicarbonate soda today. I'm like, no, because I don't have a time machine. I don't know what the fuck that. <laughs> Yeah, what is a bicarbonate soda? Hold on. I think it's like an alka seltzer. Wow, bicarbonate? That sounds really cool. But um, <laughs> yeah. is that like something Red Bull does now? I, I do know. Carbonation in it. <laughs> I think it's just a stomach thing because he was. He said, "I feel nauseous." I'm like, mm-hmm. nauseous. Get me a bicarbonate cola. <laughs> bicarbonate I mean, soda is basically it's, bacon soda. It's like an anti. Uh, uh, oh, you ruined my. He wanted bacon soda and water. That's what he wanted. I was thinking. I think he wanted an antacid. Is what it's. That's what he wants. You just get that baby some ginger ale. I looked at <laughs> bicarbonate and soda, and, yeah. and baking soda came just up. The whiskey. Oh, uh, old time bicarbonate medicines. soda. 
So that's uh, that's an old thing that sounds like a new thing because we we never heard of it. In a while. It's like uh, it's like when some new artist covers an old artist, but we all think it's their original work. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you find out a... that the original work that you thought was the original work was actually a redo of somebody else that was. <laughs> yeah, like like when that hack when that hack Bob Dylan covered "Live and Let Die," a Guns and Roses song. Oh wait, no, that's not "Live and mm. Let Die." <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to an interview with Weird Al Yankovic and they were talking about like, because he's been doing covers for so long, like kids today might come across Weird Al before they come across the, the, the original. Material, it's yeah. true. Maybe. <laughs> it, it happened to me even then, even, even when I was young, because, you know. Yeah. I mean, he's been doing music since the what mid 70s. Yeah. <laughs> That's really. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's been a while. Oh, wow. I, mean, I mean, I remember him growing up, but we didn't. Al's getting up towards 70 now, I think. And absolutely no scandals. Nope. Yeah, that dude's a, Tom Hanks level uh, nice guy. He's a fucking saint. He's no. <laughs> That's upsetting. I mean, it's, it seems to be hard to do that. In that like the industry. only beef he ever had, and he wasn't even mad, it was it was when he covered when he did Gangster's Paradise, but he did Amish Paradise. <laughs> Coolio was mad at him, yeah. Coolio was mad at him because there was a miscommunication between their management teams. And even in this interview, he was like, and now me and Coolio, well, we're Coolio again. You know, like <laughs> the only person Weird you can think of that might be mad at Weird Al's, not still mad at Weird Al. I believe Weird Al probably still covers. talks to Coolio. Yeah. <laughs> he always asked first to make sure it was okay. He never just did one without asking. Yeah. And once it came out, Coolio thought it was hilarious. And that's why Coolio likes him. Mm. Yeah, Thank I mean, I think parody stuff like that history. is good, but if you take the, the courtesy, because I mean, it ultimately, it does point back to the original. You want to, you know, well, I mean, not, it, I mean, the only reason he's doing it, they're already popular songs, right? I mean, they're, mm-hmm. yeah, like yeah. Michael, Michael Jackson needed his, uh, you know, needed, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I always remember that one. That was, that was hilarious. That was like it's not those. quite taken off, uh, Weird Al. I was hoping you'd do a cover about food so that people could know more about me, Michael Jackson. <laughs> me, Michael Jackson, who, uh, yeah, I did two Michael Jackson's. He did one of Bad called Fat. Which yeah. Also, I, yeah. I know yeah. the exact moment I learned about Weird Al. Because back when my mother would clean houses, I'm pretty sure she did that trick where you take one DVD from each house so you can have your own collection. <laughs> <laughs> yes, nice. everyone knows that famous trick. <laughs> famous <laughs> trick called <laughs> steady <Petty stealing>. theft. Yeah, <laughs> you only take one from each house until you have a decent collection. But anyway, yeah. in that collection was just an unopened, like Weird Al music video collection, and that oh, is where cool. I learned all about Weird Al. Wow, still got that. No, it was unopened. Damn, it was unopened. Uh, that's probably well, cool. that, would, that wouldn't be the one I would would have nicked, right? I mean, that would have been the one that seemed. Somebody yeah, that's not missed. one that's been borrowed, you know. Right. That's, that's how, how I learned, learned about your sister. Probably has it. I mean, if if it was still it was still closed, they weren't gonna watch it anyway. Fucking yeah, that it's open season on that shit. That's true. <laughs> It's just 20 years later when they think they can sell it for, you know, it's a collector's item thing now. Right? They find out their son's already opened it and just laughing at Amish Paradise ah. over and over again. <laughs> our fortune! Our fortune! <laughs> our Weird Al Yankovic <laughs> savings! We we're going to make tens of dollars! Tired. We could have had uh, Yankovic uh, money! <laughs> Yankovic money! Uh, Lord have mercy. Do you guys know that Italy won the Euro World or the Euro Cup final? No, I hadn't noticed on every fucking social media platform. <laughs> I know. What is the Euro Cup? It's, it's soccer. soccer. Football. It's fucking Football soccer. for the rest of the world. It's European <laughs> soccer. <laughs> and there's a lot of people at my job that like to watch soccer. And then, you know, they yeah. root and they're cheering. It's and as I'm watching them watch it, I'm just thinking to myself, how can I make soccer better as a sport? And I first thought, watch it. There's too much. Well, there's, there's too much field. I'm sick of there being so much field. Cut that in half and then cut the number of players in half and scoot everything up close. Then what so, you need to do, handballs interrupt the game. So you take everybody's hands, time behind the back. So I don't want to sit here and wait for someone to do a kick because they're waiting for someone to, you know, do that dumb just shit. Touch their hand, right? Yeah. yeah. And then I want it to be like hockey, where if you have a dispute with somebody, you fight it out. But since, Literally. you know, hands are behind your back. They're out there chickening. Like, yeah, 
you're trying to kick the shit out of each other. And then you give it a couple seconds, you break it up, they go to the penalty box. And then I thought also That's just not a bad fun, idea. Give it the goalie a, a sword. Idea. Give the goalie a sword so he can try to slice the ball out the air. Well, I think a goalie would want a morning star. That way he can like catch it on the Oh, that'd be even cooler. You know what? Yeah. Fine. A weapon of their choice. Just yeah, no yeah, firearms. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. No gunslingers. I'd be sneaky and, t- and pick a <laughs> um, Iron Maiden and just open it up across the goal. <laughs> Suckers. Free talent. I like that. Terrence yeah. wins. This, this game, game is boring. boring. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> well, because there's an NES game called Arch Rivals. Did you guys ever play that? Mm-mm. I think Mm-mm. I did. It's NBA oh, Jam, except familiar. there's a button you, where you can just you punch, punch each other. Yeah, you yeah. punch the shit out of the person with the ball to take the ball. That's how you stole yeah. the ball. Yeah. <laughs> the basketball the, game, and you could fight and stuff like a hockey game in it. Yeah. There was the old NFL Blitz, too, where you could put the code in and actually be raiding from uh, Mortal Kombat and throw lightning bolts at people as you tried to make touchdowns. That's pretty funny. Yeah. It's the closest <laughs> I ever got to really enjoying a sports game. I think the only thing I've ever been peripherally interested in, even slightly as far as like a sport goes, is maybe playing Blood Bowl, the miniatures game. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, a, that that Blood Bowl. that's a game, games that. workshop game. Uh, people that do like Warhammer 40K and stuff. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, okay. But it's like orcs and knights and shit, but they're playing, it's a tabletop game where you're, you're basically playing murder, murder ball. That looks not really played. fun. It looks fun, but the models for them are really cool looking. Dude, I'm looking at it right now. It looks like football. I think we might have lost Terrence. Oh, no. Well, mm, he, he brought up the subject and his computer was like, I've had enough. Crap. <sighs> that is it. Uh, I mean, is it like a short game? Is it a long game? Is it a I don't know. I've never actually played I mean, it. I only ever see it because I follow the Games Workshop people so I can see what next expensive plastic crack I want to buy. Um, let's see. Let's see. It takes between 45 and 150 minutes for a game. Yeah, that's not terrible. Most not of the bad. games are in that vein. Two, I mean, two and a half hours, right? Are. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty that's pretty average for tabletop, right? Now, when they give you that number, I find they mean once everything is set up and you're both standing where you need to stand to play this game, and they start and the go. timer when you roll the first dice, yeah. Oh yeah, setup is four to ten minutes. And snacks. They've and never snacks and snacks. bullshitting and showing each other your your fucking painted miniatures and bragging about them, you know. So it's an all day event. And then somebody trips and you yeah. knock over a piece and then you fight for twenty minutes where that mm-hmm. piece was at. Yep. I've lost many of friends that way. They've never really? found the God bodies. rest their souls. Yeah. Fuck them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did we really lose Terrence? Terrence no, he's gone. not even in the meeting anymore. He's gone, gone. Well, you know, we're talking about for Noob Show. Watching this is what Big you get Money. for not having a format. <laughs> this is what you get. This is your fault, Noob. Whatever. Fucking sue me. I can show Damn. you my views. <laughs> yeah. That's up. Uh, I, I, like, I, I did the first segment, then Tucker did the second segment, then it was... Terrence has turned to the next segment and then he left. <laughs> you act like that was a structure. That's not what was, that's not what was happening. Terrence got tired of listening to us talk and he was about to to jump in and I was fine with it because he was talking about something that I like. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now it's just the three of us and I feel awkward. It is awkward. Noob, give Plus, us give us something. What do we do? What do I we do? Be a lot of, I thought it'd be a lot of fun to be a cocksmith. What is that? A dildo maker. Oh, It'd just be fun okay. to make dicks all day. I think eventually you get tired of it. I mean, that's I mean, what's like creative, anything. like our like Bad Dragon. I think it's <laughs> uh, when you get tired of being a cocksmith, they just call you worn out. Maybe so. <laughs> Maybe so. I don't get that joke, Tank. It's not even a joke. It's <laughs> like, just like saying worn out. Oh, no. Well, this brief the, uh, pause was brought to you by Egg <clears throat> Sweat. Are you tired of waiting on your eggs to sweat? Buy Egg Sweat. <laughs> what the fuck is Egg Sweat? <laughs> it's a stupid commercial. I did this on the Saturday game when we hit this. We were waiting on somebody to get in, and I really made myself giggle about it. I picture <laughs> like this woman who's like, 
she pulls these eggs out of the refrigerator and just goes, oh man, like I gotta wait on these to condensate. And then like this little magical egg comes in that's like sweaty already. <laughs> Cause you know, if you leave <laughs> cold eggs out on the counter, they get sweaty. They condensate <laughs> on the outside. It's got egg sweat on it. That's the title mm-hmm. right there. Egg sweat. Egg sweat. <laughs> so this little, this little cartoon egg comes running out from the side. It's like, don't worry, madam. I'm here and I'm I'm moist as fuck and like it's just like a <laughs> jar full of his full of his sweat egg sweat and like you use that for all your cooking needs bathing needs hey is the dog dirty sprinkle a little egg sweat on that bitch <laughs> oh I would love to do some god action. Yeah. oh that oh that wow. reminds of me of surprise egg oh god we never did those. It was going to be an idea for a YouTube channel because you have like the fucking kids open the big Easter eggs, call them surprise egg. Mm-hmm. But we wanted to make like a like a mystery YouTube channel where it's just a guy that up to, <laughs> that just uploads himself finding surprise eggs in places. <laughs> like he opens everywhere. his mailbox. <laughs> and then it's, it, I, I think we wanted it to start to get dark. It was going to get like, dark to the point where he, he thinks that the egg's cheating on his wife. And then actually the surprise egg murders his wife, but actually his wife was a surprise egg the whole time. <laughs> it's so <laughs> dumb. <laughs> that is or it's dumb. just like fucking 10 minutes of him driving back home from work and traffic, getting real pissed off at shit. You know, he just opens his glove box. Surprise egg. And then he starts to go mad. Like he's yeah. finding the eggs everywhere. He turns on a shower, eggs fall out instead of water. It just gets really yeah. uncomfortable for him. Getting change for that gum at the grocery store, and the lady's like, "Here's your change," and she just hands him one egg. <laughs> he says, he looks at the camera, goes, "Surprise egg," and mm-hmm. then that's the end of the video. Play a little mm-hmm. like xylophone ukulele and outro. Ding, 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 that's ding, so ding. So dumb. <laughs> you know, the stuff, the stuff that we think about sometimes is just real dumb. Yeah, I don't know. That might work. <laughs> It might. Who knows? I watched a 14 minute video. It might not have been that long, but it was somebody had bought a McGruff costume <laughs> and did a Marty. short, a short, like gritty um, crime trailer. Like McGruff was actually like a, a mean detective. You know, like he mm-hmm. was he shot, he was trying to shoot the perp, but he shot like some citizens. <laughs> <laughs> he's in the interview room and the lady's like you just can't you can't keep going on like this and the dude stands up in that McGruff outfit grabs his junk is like take a bite out of this bitch <laughs> like, why am I watching this it's so dumb but it's funny <laughs> take a bite out of this bitch oh, whatever happened to McGruff He's drugs. He started doing drugs. He started doing drugs. I yeah. guess I don't know. I remember that. That and Smokey the Bear. Well, Smokey the Bear still are not Smokey the Bear, but you know, uh, it was Smokey the Bear, wasn't it? It is, yeah. He's still Smokey around a little bit, I think. I see him around and they have some versions of him. But, I'm sure um, if you go to somewhere where a park ranger gives you a tour of a landscape, there's a Smokey the Bear poster somewhere. Yeah. Maybe in some elementary schools there might be. Yeah, so nowhere near your house, but (laughs) 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 so did you have just say no, Matt? Did you have just say no when you were in school? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I I didn't really go to school, but the um, yeah, I mean, it was around when I was school age. What about you, noob? Was, Was just say no still a thing for you? Yeah, but I was at the very tail end of it. I'm very confused. I'm like, what do you mean you didn't go to school? Oh. No, I was like homeschooled. Oh. No, but yeah, no, we had so much. Just we had just say yeah. no, and apparently it just doesn't fucking work. No, it introduces kids to loads of drugs way before they need to be introduced to drugs. Yeah, have you heard of heroin? No. Oh, well, this is what it is. Well, let me tell you about it, and then your parents will correct you on everything I'm wrong about later because they do drugs. It was like that Chappelle show skit where Tyrone Biggums comes to the classroom and he's talking about mm-hmm. how awesome drugs are. You all know you can take $20 out your mama's purse. Get on the A train. 
<laughs> and it was the fun. It's the cheapest drug. Mm-hmm. It lets all the cartoon characters come out of the TV screens and talk to you just mm-hmm. like Scooby Doo. <laughs> no, we had a. Uh, I remember having for a Just Say No meeting. There was a cop that came in and he told us you couldn't get shrooms in, in South Carolina. So anything, any any mushrooms people are trying to feed you are probably poisonous. Just trying False. to scare us off drugs. And he was. He told us a story about when you do so much cocaine, you get uh, you get black boogers. You know, nobody wants the black boogers, and <laughs> That's... Um, not true. And I like, just remember telling my dad all this stuff, and he's just correcting me, like, no, like you can do so much cocaine that that middle part of your nose will dissolve. That's not good. Uh, no, you could totally get shrooms in this state. Like I could show. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have to have that conversation. Nobody's trying to sling a, a 10 year old magic mushrooms. It's like no. when they bring you the fucking drunk goggles. That is not what like being drunk or high is like. Mm, at it's way all. sadder. Yeah. <laughs> no. Like, put these goggles on that fuck up everything of your debt procession and try to walk. Yeah. They I will don't do say. Because they can't see. They do that because they're blacked out. They're on autopilot. <laughs> mm hmm. I will say that fucking thing. Uh, they, uh, the thing at the fair that spins you, you go in and you kind of lay down in it mm-hmm. and it, it spins, spins around to stick to the wall. It's it, no, it's, it's, it's not a tilt world, but it's, I think it's more like Tucker Sam. Like you get your, you know, it's centrifugal force or whatever, like plasters. You can't move. Yeah. It's a tilt. Uh, I've been, I mean, is it, I don't think that's a tilt world. Cause it doesn't it's a tilt. tilt it's kind of where you just stand there. You're not sitting in anything. You're basically standing. Well, you're in not sitting. Room. You're basically like standing kind of at an angle. Like mm-hmm. leaning against a wall, and then they and you basically it starts spinning, but then all of a sudden you like try to lift your arms and stuff, and you can't move. I, I remember as a kid, but um, I was wrong. It's definitely not a tilt a whirl. Yeah, sorry. I, I can't remember what that thing is called, but I, I don't think I've seen it at the fair recently when I'm taking my kids there. But I remember mm-hmm. that as a kid because I remembered that when the first time I got like really hammered drunk, and I was like, oh fuck, I, I, I was on that ride and it couldn't stop. But. <laughs> Yeah, they make them to where, like, when you line up against the wall, too, the wall, the, the the little slots will move you up and down some. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there's a guy in the middle playing the top hit from 10 years ago. He's like <laughs> yep, DJ. Yep. Yeah. Those were gross. Yep, definitely. I still enjoyed them. I remember the first yeah. time I got actually drunk was on a cruise in Mexico. And I think I was, yeah, and I think I was 18 at the time. <laughs> And uh, they had an open bar, and there's, you know, this, the Mexican guy go around the boat, checking people's ID. You know, and he gets to me, he looks at me, he looks at my ID, and looks back at me, and then gives me the wristband. And so I was able to open yep. drink on a bar at the age of 18 in Mexico. And while, you know, drinking all day in the sun, you don't realize how hammers you're getting so fast. So me and my mom decided to go on a kayak ride, just a kayak ride around the beach. And, uh, we get about to the farthest point out in the beach and I tip her out and she's been listening all day where the guy's been talking about the Barracuda that's been out there just hanging around. Mm -hmm. So at the same time she goes out the boat, she's freaking out. I'm saying, I can't help you get back in this boat. I'm drunk. I need to go. So I'm trying to paddle off while my mom's trying to just save the fucking paddle from the kayak. And as I get far enough, she eventually gets back on. (laughs) <laughs> it, it was it was a difficult trial it was my this, fault she felt in the first part and then you didn't help her back in the boat no it was hammer i was like i gotta go i gotta go all right i can barely keep myself like upright if both of us fall out we're fucked we ain't getting this back don't be worried barracuda is, he, he just meant that's the guy's name that sells weed out here on the beach he gotta go <laughs> find barracuda he'll say you what the i good stuff. What I end up doing is getting back to the beach and then just, I was like kind of close up to the beach and just fall straight out of the boat just because. And I mm-hmm. smash my my face into about a foot of water with just beach sand underneath. Yeah. Uh. And if I wasn't hammered, it wouldn't. Have, it would have hurt like hell. And then I went to the gift shop and broke something, but so I had to buy it. So that was fun. Woohoo! <laughs> 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 So Mexico is <laughs> fun for noob. Yay. Yeah, Yay, I broke Mexico. but when I broke the little dolphin figurine, at least when I bought it, they gave me a new one to take home. Oh, okay. That's yeah, nice. but they well, I'm sure they get those things for a dollar and they're selling them for twenty dollars a piece. 
It's yeah. like you can get any fucking knickknack store. It's like any shop at South of the Border. Yeah, but not. It wouldn't have been from Mexico. Just don't get drunk and go to Mexico. Bad things happen. Or do maybe you want a story to tell like you just heard here? I mean, you didn't die, dude. You didn't die. Mm. If you just avoid all those things, yeah. But I was out twenty bucks, which is arguably worse. Oh no, twenty (laughs) dollars. Yeah, I mean, what's your first time getting nineteen (laughs) seventy? Right. I mean, what's your first time? What was y'all's first time getting hammered? Huh? What'd y'all do there? Um, hmm. you want to go first, Joker? I'm trying to recall. I they're the first. First time I probably got drunk was like at a. Uh, it wasn't completely on purpose. It was um, one of my buddy's house. He had the, his parents were like, "Kids are gonna drink, mm-hmm. but if if we're gonna give them an opportunity to do it here, where we take their keys, they can't leave. We're out in the middle of nowhere. They can get drunk and pass out. We'll be here to keep an eye on." Them. So it was like one of those safe kind of where kids can experiment with the alcohol without be it in an unsafe environment, which I thought was pretty cool, actually. Um, <clears throat> so I got drunk there. I wasn't drinking because I was very, I was kind of very anti getting fucked up when I was 15, 16. Uh, but the PJ, they had the PJs, the fruit mm. soaked booze. And I think mm-hmm. I had like four or five orange slices and I was drunk. You don't even know it, right? I didn't even realize it. I was just eating this, this stuff and, and getting to feel good, but I wasn't like wasted. I think my twentieth birthday. That was drank like half a handle of Jose Cuervo and woke up in a strange bathroom, spooning a large dog covered in vomit. That was that was when I was like, "Yeah, you got to moderate your intake here, bud." Alcohol's dangerous. Yeah, also play makes some sad mood music at the end of that. But, uh, just sad, silent. Sad. I can't put that in. I um. I think that was Jurassic Park. My bad. Can't play that. That's the shitty one. <laughs> yeah, that's mm. the one. I can't ever. I can never hear that song anymore without hearing it. That <laughs> the derp. Welcome the derp, to No Man's Sky. Derpy way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that mm. game. Um, I think I was like fourteen. I think the first time I drank, like got drunk. Um. We lived out, not like in the, I guess we were in the country. I don't know, but it was, uh, there was a lot of farms around us and stuff like that. And so, but there were some country, Matt. I know. I, I, I still want to think of it as pseudo suburbia, but it's not, but, um, it's not, there were four farms around there. I worked at three of them. So it was definitely the country, but, um, no, I had a call. I had one for each hole, two friends, um, in particular that they're, uh, their parents were split up. Right. And so like they're in there, they, they both live with their mom and they're both their moms were their shift. And so, you know, they wouldn't be home till six o'clock in the morning, they would leave. And, you know, so that's kind of where we hung out like at night and stuff. And there we would hang out. We would um, like when I was younger, we would camp out. Like that was like a big thing. Like we would just like, mm-hmm. you, you would get tents and you would go, Oh, I'm going to camp out at, you know, John's house or whatever. And um, so you would go camp out, but then you wouldn't stay there. You would just, go wherever and um but yeah no i think the first time i ever got drunk i, I remember waking up like i don't know it was early in the morning but i was like out in the, i just passed out in a field somewhere that was just kind of i guess i was in transit from one place to another or something but um i didn't drink <laughs> much i didn't drink much when i was younger um until I, you know i was like 15 or so when i started smoking pot and then well, we smoked pot a lot but um i didn't like to drink a lot because i get sick I would, yeah, it would make me sick. I would get you know throw up and stuff. And it was something you were stupid when you were young. You know, I was I was drinking. That you means know, it's working. Maybe, but I was drinking vodka. Yeah. You know, we drink <laughs> we drink freaking screwdrivers and then chase it with Mag Dog Twenty Twenty. We don't know what the fuck we're doing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, there's some of that vomit. I still remember the flavor. Ever ever clear and Kool Aid. <laughs> ever clear yeah. and Kool Aid. We would have that. We'd have those coolers full of that PJ or Can Shake or mm-hmm. all the other names for that freaking whatever. Mm-hmm jungle juice jungle juice all that stuff that you would drink and you would just think oh this is great and then all of a sudden you're like you know just losing it in the bushes oh there was some time i was just gonna get i'd get like acid reflux it was bad before i started to get really drunk i had to power through the acid reflux to get drunk and it's just like why am i why am i doing this 
Oh, because when, when I'm drunk, I, I yeah. Right. That's fun. That yeah. and the chain, like the chain reactions, that was always that killed me. I would, you know, trying to be holding it together and then like. You look like a guy that would puke and rally. The, uh, what? Did you puke and rally? Were you a puke and rally guy? What does that mean? I don't it's that. where you're drunk and somebody says, hey, do this shot. You say, yeah. And then you do it and you're like, now nah, I got to go pee and you go vomit. Yeah. I used and to then that. you rinse your mouth out and you go back to drinking afterwards. I did that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I did. that's what you gotta did do that. when you're ham- I'll, if I start feeling sick when I'm drinking the first thing I'm doing is going behind somewhere and sticking fingers down my throat to throw up mm-hmm. this is, yeah. it feels so much better God, I, throwing up when you're, oh. I don't think I've thrown <laughs> up some alcohol in probably um, I don't know 15 it's years or time. I, no. I, mean, no. I did last year but it was a sad moment the, um, Same. well but sadness makes you puke too so don't blame it on the yeah. booze um, when I went to um, when I worked at the radio station, I had a recorder in my pocket nine times out of ten, mm-hmm. uh, so I could record drunk people. And sometimes I was those drunk people. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I remember again, you shouldn't drink and drive, but I did. And the recorder was on in my pocket, so you could hear me on the way home getting a phone call from the bar I was at and explaining to them that I had left a tip and I had paid, which I did. Mm-hmm. It was just a busy night and I'd left it to the side. Uh, then drunkenly calling. Um, she wasn't even an ex-girlfriend. She was a, a, a girl who was a friend that I wanted more out of. Mm-hmm. So I was drunkenly calling her, even though she was like eight states away at that point. But what's really funny about it is you hear me get home. And I wish I still had this recorded because you hear the keys jangle <laughs> and you hear the door creak open and close and then the heavy footsteps and you hear the bathroom door open and close and then you hear the toilet lift up clank and then you hear me go here goes eighty dollars because that was how much my tab had been that night <laughs> here goes eighty dollars like, uh, i had to listen to that the next day and it's just like oh my god uh, how do you give yourself <clears throat> such a one-liner <laughs> that's fantastic dude because he's a funny. professional no, I'm so, I got before we, we're getting close to the end, but no, on my 21st that. birthday, I drank. We went out to eat. I had like two shots there. I had me a, you know, one of the big margaritas. And then I went home and found like half a bottle of Jose Cuervo and just started doing drinks while singing the song. And you keep mm-hmm. going. Well, eventually it got to the point where it was just me, my mother, and my cousin, and my brother there. Then they were just watching me get hammered. There's videos out there that make me sick watching. I hate watching them. Because of how just, fucked up you were? It was it was terrible, yeah. You know, the classic. It was a good time. Like, it, I was having the time of my fucking life. I thought I was time traveling because what I was really <laughs> doing was just blacking out. Yeah. Because you go to do something, you're like, I mean, holy shit. Two seconds. time ago. travel. Yeah, it's like, holy shit, two seconds ago, I was just getting ice water. Now my brother's giving me a field sobriety test that I'm fucking up. <laughs> I think my favorite thing is, is I need to go to the bathroom. So my mother walks me to the bathroom. You know, I'm fucking barely standing up. And I get to the bathroom and I it's a small trailer bathroom. So I just throw my back against the, the wall to, for support. Shut the door. And she says you could hear me saying, okay, door shut, lid up, dick out, piss. That's and good. That's, that's good. Yeah, yeah. It was it was a it was a terrible terrible time. Do we want to get Terrence back in here? Sure. Yeah, but I... you giving me the the hold on thing. No, so no, no? I, I hit yes. Oh, he you. Oh, that's right. You can let him in. Yeah, I thought I just hit yes. Where's he at? There he hey, is. Hey, Terrence, you're back. Yeah, yeah. Less sorry. than time to close the show. Thank you, Terrence. How do you close it out for us? Oh, okay, everyone. Thanks for listening to the Noob Show. Um, I don't know what it was about. Ultimately, egg sweat. Egg sweat. Uh, all right, well, don't egg listen sweat. to the Noob Show anymore. Uh, that's egg the sweat. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, make sure you check out our links below for all the other things that we do with the Homebrew Crew and Noob's uh, new podcast um, coming soon, where it's just him watching hentai and all you hear is wet slapping noises. 
Oh, My favorite fantastic. when Hideko comes on Mixik, he's back. Ugh. All right. How is that our most requested show? <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody. It's been episode 26. <laughs> Good night, everybody. That number's probably See wrong. Uh, egg sweat. It's probably egg my sweat. best episode. Egg sweat. Stop saying egg, egg sweat. sweat. Stop it.